Alrighty. Oops, shaking the camera. Sorry about that. How is YouTube doing this morning? Uh, afternoon. It's already uh, middle of the day. I am blazing hot. I was working on some uh, bus projects and I thought maybe I'd stop and get a video out there. Um, I'm taking the wheels apart, I'm, as you guys probably know from the last video. I uh, got some some pretty serious brake issues going on with the bus. I have ordered all the wheel cylinders for the back. If you don't know anything about buses, that would be four wheel cylinders for the brakes in the back. There are two at upper and a lower on each side of the back brakes on both sides. And the same on the front, there are a total of four. So we'll be getting to replacing the front ones, but I've got to get the back end down. I've got it up on a stump right now so I can get in there and work on it. I've got the two wheels off on this back corner back here that'd be the driver's side rear um and anyway uh, i was taking and took one apart i uh, had one had an inner tube that slipped inside of it before i bought it so we couldn't get to the air valve got it here long story short was taking it apart it still had air in it and i couldn't get to the air valve uh, it didn't have a lot of air luckily uh, nightmare getting it apart got it apart and i was like you know let's let's get the wheels painted uh, they were it was pretty rusty on the inside and uh, I thought, you know, there's a lot of people that probably don't know how a school bus wheel comes apart. Um, this is an older bus. Again, it's an 81 model uh, GMC. Um, so it's got what they call Dayton style wheels, which if you see the, the vehicles on the road, it just has like a big five spoke uh, star in the middle of it. Um, and then it's just the wheels, just a ring basically that holds on. So, um, People call them widow makers. They're not widow makers. Widow makers were old uh, split rims that actually they sealed up in the middle with an O-ring and they could just blow apart at any minute because you couldn't see what was going on without putting your head over top of them. Um, that would be a widow maker. They haven't used those for a very long time. These are split rings. A lot of people still refer to them as widow makers. They're not. Um, I use these a lot in the military. When I was in the military, these were the only kind of wheels we had on our big trucks. Um, and they were very safe uh, as long as you take them apart and put them back together the right way. So with that being said, I want to say right up front, this is not an instructional video. Don't do anything I do and do not do it the way that I do it because, you know, you've got to do what's, what's right for you and your own safety. Uh, I'm just wanting to uh, show you guys what I'm doing today. So with that being said, not instructional, uh, do not do this on your own. But if you're not sure at all on how to uh, change your tires, uh, take it to a professional, have them show you how to do it. And then if you feel comfortable doing it yourself, uh, carry on from there. So anyway, let's get these wheels uh, broke down and I'll show you the tools I'm gonna use and I'll show you why I like Dayton wheels. Um, and uh, as opposed to the Bud style wheels, which is what's normally on. That's the kind of wheel that would be on your kind of car it's kind of got a hub in the middle of the wheel um more conventional that's what a lot of the newer stuff's going to do but with that being said if you have a flat on the side of the road and you have to take that tire off uh to change it i mean man i don't know anybody carries a tire changer with them uh in their vehicle um i don't so uh but i do carry a couple tools so i can change a tire if need be uh one thing you'll find about dayton style wheels uh most of them have inner tubes inside of them so you know as long as the inner tubes got air the tires going to be up so anyway let's uh let's move around outside um and i'll pop take these wheels apart and show you uh show you how simple that is and then i'm going to get to get to doing some wire brushing on them and getting them uh painted up and make them look nice so uh hopefully uh, they'll dry over the next day or so and when the wheel cylinders show up i can put those wheels back on tear down the other side break the wheels and tires down for it, paint them while I'm fixing the brakes on that side, and then we'll just go around all, finish all four corners. But I'm just gonna show you this part today. So anyway, let's get going. In case you guys are wondering, this this is what the back of the brakes look like. There should be a wheel cylinder right here and one right down here that ex they expand and uh, it's what applies your brake shoes. So the brake shoes look like pretty much like new in there. Um, so they're, they're not bad. There's a, uh, a brake drum. This thing would be my shoe for the, uh, size comparison. This thing is pretty massive. So, um, 
no small feet getting it off, but it is doable. So anyway, back to the tires. Okay, so here are the two wheels off the driver's side back of the bus. And uh, this one I started to paint, but I decided I really wanted to, to get that lip underneath. And uh, so I put it back together so I can show you guys how this comes apart. But all we're going to use is basically these two tools for removal. And this one is nothing more than a locker ring removal tool. It's got a little cam up here on the end of it. Um, and then this one would be to separate the bead from underneath the wheel there. Uh, may need a hammer to put it up under there, but to kind of knock it in. It's got a flat spot there specifically for a hammer to hit on the back of it to knock it under the bead. But this, this ring around the outside actually comes off. And this is the what everybody would contend would, would agree that is the dangerous part and there's a little little notch here i wonder why my camera just died the camera seems to have died there we go all right so this ring here would be there's a little notch here to to, to have the ring help help pry it out um the tool that the the cam tool actually does not go if you try to fit it in that little notch, it's just not going to make it. It actually goes between this split in the rim. And I'm going to try to do this with one hand. But basically, you get the cam in there. And you see how it locks. But, but, but when you pull on this, it'll actually separate that ring out enough to where you can get the other tool under and pry up on it. And it's got to come out from under that lip. So let me put the camera up here. Uh, and I will pull this apart real quick and uh, we'll we'll move on Hope you guys can see me okay with this. Um, I'm just using the GoPro today So audio will not be very good from back there. So if you hear me muttering to myself, it's just an old guy rambling But anyway, I'm gonna take this uh, ring off here so it's as easy as that this has to actually lock under the wheel so we won't paint that part of the wheel either on the inside but I do want to paint this outer edge here because you can still see it when they're mounted so I want them to look nice and nice and pretty going up the road of course if they're going to get scuffed up coming off that's just part of the deal with these kind of wheels but the beautiful thing is is it's just steel and a little bit of paint. They look like new again. So, so anyway, let's get the wheel off the uh, the rim there. I'll show you how that works. And I, I will. Uh, there's no valve cores in these tires. Um, the very first thing you want to do on a wheel like this, before you even take it off of the bus, before you dismount it, is you want to remove the valve core out of your out of your tires. And I use I just keep one of these little valve core removers on my uh one of my lug caps there or uh, valve caps so you can just take and remove the valve core throw it in your pocket so you don't lose it but if there's no air in these tires they're they're 100 safe um, there's nothing going on with the tires that can possibly hurt you when there's no air in there so uh but we'll go over how to uh how to reassemble them and how, how to put air in them safely uh, uh after i get the brakes fixed and the wheels are ready to go back on so That'll probably be a couple days for me, but it'll be just a matter of minutes for you guys, I'm sure. So anyway, we're going to get this wheel off and uh, 
get it so I can move it over to where it's going to be painted at. So with well, there we go. Let's do this. With that ring removed, we can take the bead separator tool, and I'll be. There we go. We can take this tool under again. I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. You want to slide it under that lip and then just pull down and it'll separate the bead. You see the gap in there? And you'll do this all the way around. And then uh, once the bead's released, you can basically just work the wheel out of there. So, which is what we're going to do now because this bead's already been, already been released. So let me put the camera back down. Hope you guys can see. reason we're taking this off is because I want to be able to paint this lip behind here without painting the tire you know without painting it uh, green so so anyway should be able to gotta coax it through inner tube you can just bend out of the way and pull it through which is what we're going to have to do as it gets closer to the end there So inside the tire, this is just a cover, and then your your inner tube is behind it. I'm not going to pull that out, but uh, if you need to change or repair an inner tube, this is what you would have to do to get to gain access to it. But again, I'm not going to pull all that apart. Uh, there's no need to delay, and uh, set the tire off the side, and that'll give me access to wire brush and paint this inside lip, clean this up a little bit. And uh, again, we're gonna, we'll paint this outside lip, but there's a notch and this is what your ring will actually slide up inside of. This part of your ring will stop up in here. So, so there's no way to, that the tire can fly apart once there's pressure on it. So anyway, I'm gonna get this other one, other one tore down and uh, do a little bit of uh, wire brush work on these and then there's a, a spacer that sits in between these tires since they are uh, on the back of the bus there'll be a spacer in between it actually goes on the on the ring side but the uh, the rings will actually face together it'll set them sit in between like that but uh, this one you won't see you'll see the outside of one of them but they're, as you can tell from the inside of this other one, it's pretty rusty. So it definitely needs to, uh, to be cleaned up. So anyway, I'm going to get those broke apart and get to painting. So hope you guys have had fun and I'll be back, um, be back after I get these, uh, broke down. I mean, I'll bring you back for the painting part, maybe for the wire brush part. It'd be kind of boring, I think, but yeah. You always fast forward. All right, guys, I'm going to share another 
piece of information with you guys here um, on these tires. I had some trouble getting getting this back one or other one off there, um, and the reason why is I don't know if you guys can see this little flaky stuff here. This is not part of your this is not part of your wheel originally. If you see this stuff around your around the beads of your tires, be very very upset with your tire guy. Um, this is basically a glue they put on conventional tires, um, tubeless tires, uh, to help seal them up against rims that are pitted up and everything. So um, this has got inner tubes in it. So this glue is absolutely useless, ex except for to make it way more difficult than it needs to be if you have to change a tire on the side of the road. So um, what I wound up doing was taking a bumper jack. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen seen farm jacks here and I put it underneath the front bumper of the bus and against the bead uh, with the wheel in there and just had to crank down on it to to break that bead loose and I had to do that all the way around the tire so um, again it's it's got an inner tube in it that glue does nothing to seal the tire against the wheel other than to make your life miserable or the next guy that's got to break it down's life miserable um, trying to take it off the wheel it, it, it's absolutely useless tire guys come on you're smarter than that it's a two it's got an inner tube in it there's no reason to seal it to a metal wheel and a metal locking ring with a with a quarter inch gap there's no way that air would ever be held inside of that if the tube blows so you, you guys are better than that man don't don't make it any more difficult on people than what you have to so um, but anyway, I wanted to show you guys what I was talking about, about the hubs on the bus. This uh, five-star pattern, that's actually the hub. That's what grabs, this is a wheel, obviously. Not, not, I haven't painted it yet, but uh, somebody else did earlier. But um, These little locks just come on here and hold the wheel to the hub all the way around. And that's, it's a really simple, simple way to change a tire on the road. Um, you just spin those off and then the whole round ring pulls off towards you and you can basically change the tire it's uh in my opinion it's a lot easier the bud style wheels you've got the lug nuts in the center and there's usually at least 10 of them on buses um, and you've got to line up those studs while you're holding the whole contraption up in the air and try to get them to slide on and it's just a nightmare with these you basically just slide the ring you slide the wheel over onto the to the uh, bus hub there and it doesn't matter where it lines up of course you know I, I try to match up the paint marks just just because but it doesn't matter if you match the paint marks up or not and then basically you would uh, just just tighten these in a, in a triangle you want to get a triangle you would start with one and then move to another opposing one either one and if, but if you would tighten this one say you start here you tighten this guy then you want to move to this one so this guy go to here then you want to go that one that way you've got a triangle holding on basically two of them and uh then you tighten the rest of them down and you would actually put a block of wood or a, a hammer handle on the ground rotate this and make sure it's the same distance from the handle all the way around and basically basically that's it to putting your wheel in a in a pretty much of a nice balance there um you can use dyna beads inside the tubes helps out even even more but uh, they're really simple and they're really friendly to change on the on the side of the road and uh, they interchange with the entire all the way around the bus. It doesn't matter which tire. So you can pull pull one off the back if you had to and put it on the front. As long as your bus is a dually, you always have at least two spares because uh, you can always take one off the back if you have to until you get somewhere where you can change it. But uh, anyway, back to uh, wire brushing and painting. Okay, so I've got everything wire brushed up as good as this, good as it's going to get. Um, this really needs some protection to keep it from rusting any further. So the collar on the wheels there, um, all the there's no big box stores anywhere within an hour of where I'm at. So basically, I've got one one uh, feed store. Um, and there's a Walmart about a half hour away, but uh, Walmart didn't have any oil based paint. Um, so um, all they had was like water based for interior. I want oil based to kind of help prevent rust and, and coat the metal. So what I did is I went to the tractor store and I got a, just a thing of all purpose white 
and uh, took like one of those little uh, medicine cups like for a NyQuil bottle um, I just took and put like some Ford blue and some agricultural yellow um, I put like uh, one and three quarters of uh, no sorry I put one and a half of those cups of yellow and I put two full cups of those uh, the little measuring cups uh, of blue in there and just stirred it up and uh, it gave me the, the nice green color that you see there so it can be duplicated and <laughs> this is enough to make gallons of, of of that so it just takes very little so anyway that's how I came with that so but I'm gonna get, get a coat of paint on these and let them dry uh, probably for the rest of this day and overnight and then tomorrow I'll come out and flip them over and uh, go around and touch up the, the other sides of them and let them set for another day uh, and probably overnight again before I actually put them back on the uh, put the tires back on them so so anyway I'm just going to get these painted up and that's it Okay, so that's pretty much it for today. I just, just got to let these dry and then uh, we'll flip them over tomorrow and put another coat of paint on them, try to touch up any of the, uh, any of the light spots and uh, go on. Um, anyway, they say it's mostly to keep them from, uh, from rust, rust preventative and uh, deterrent. So, um, and I think they'll look better. So anyway, you know, when they all match. But, we're going to let this uh, set up and dry, and uh, I'm going to go and check and see if maybe our wheel cylinders have shown up yet. So, I um, haven't, haven't checked, uh, checked with the mail on that one yet. So, anyway, um, until tomorrow. Good morning everybody, it's the next day, still drinking coffee, and uh, looks like the paint has dried enough to turn the wheels over and uh, give them another coat from the back side, and uh, hopefully, let me sit you down there, hopefully we won't get any rain today, they were calling for calling for some rain last night and uh, it uh, luckily we didn't get it so I uh, came out last night after towards the end of the day and checked on them. they were dry enough that if it did rain it wouldn't have been an issue I don't think so anyway like I say they don't have to be perfect they just have to be better than what they were so we're gonna flip these over and catch the uh, catch the underside so no, no paint on my hands so that's a good that's a good sign. So I'm going to flip all this stuff over and just uh, shake the paint back up and give it another give it another coat and then move on to other things. Uh, brake parts did not come in yesterday so um, I called uh, no no package delivery so maybe maybe today. Um, what is today? It's Tuesday so if they don't show up today maybe they'll be here tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to flip these over and uh, shake up some paint and drink some coffee while I uh, give these another coat. So.
Alrighty, it is another day again, and uh, I've let these wheels dry overnight, so they look like they're pretty much ready to go on. Um, paint seems seems to be pretty dry, and I'm gonna go ahead. Got good news, my my brake parts are finally in. I got a call uh, that the package showed up in the mail, so that's about an hour away. So I think before it gets too hot in the day here, I'll go ahead and get these get these tires mounted, and then I'm going to take off and go get go pick up my packages, and I've got to stop and do a couple other errands, and then I'll come back and and uh, finish off from here. But um, we'll go ahead and get these set up and uh, and get them put on. So. If you guys want to get an idea how t how big these tires are, yeah, they're over my waist. That's not a mistake. <laughs> One thing you want to remember when you put these on, it's pretty much all of them. The, the tire valve goes uh, towards the split ring on the outside, so um, it's easy way to remember which way to mount it up because you want your tire valves, if this is your ring on the front tires, you can get your air chuck onto it. And in the back you'll have, basically this will be spun around and you can easily easily reach through on the outside this would be the outside tire hook up the air hose and then the inner one would be facing ring forward so the valve will be pointing right at you so always mount the, the air valves to the split ring side so we're just going to set this down over the wheel and feed this feed this back through it just like we did on the way in or the way off and uh yeah it's as simple as that actually we can probably just just work it in there. Let's center that. I fully expect that these will get scuffed up a little bit, but it's that's absolutely fine. And uh, we can touch them up. So, and I'm putting it in exactly backwards. These things are pretty heavy. I don't know what they weigh, but they are heavy. Ah. Man. Man. I'm gonna start that in first. Let's do this. Just trying to hold it up where you can see it. But, uh, that is way easier said than done.
All right, so that's in. Like I said, you want to make sure your tire valve is facing through and your apron inside stays in place. That's this guy. And it, it may take a little, little coaxing to get it to go through there, but it should, should go in without much, much issues. It is hot again today. All right, so to put these back on, I normally take this split and I put it away from the tire valve, which is right here. I know you guys probably can't see that. I usually start this end here, put the split in, and Um, just stand on it. It gets it down, down below that lip, and then I just work it around. And you have to do this um, pretty aggressively. It's a it's a lot of pressure on this. So. There it goes. Alright. Let me get a get a rag and wipe that off there. I think I need a new pair of gloves, what do y'all think? Okay, so we've got our tire valve and our split. And you want to make sure that this ring has to be seated under this lip all the way around. And as you can see, it is. And once that's clipped in, it's pretty well impossible for that to fly apart. I won't say impossible, it's extremely unlikely. So, and like I said earlier, we're not worried about scuffing the wheel up when we install the ring. It's just gonna happen. So I'm gonna take a little bit of paint and touch that back up. And on the back side as well, if there's any damage, and uh, just touch them up and roll them to the side, and we'll start the next one. Right, for anybody curious, I've used less than a half of a, of a can of this white paint mixed up to do two wheels at this point. So I would say uh, one of these uh, small cans will do, probably will do all four of the rear ones totally fine. I don't know if you get both front ones done with that, so you might need to buy two of these, or just a gallon would probably be better. So, But I was playing around with the mix and wasn't sure if I'd be able to make the collar I wanted. So anyway, um, easy enough. But as I say, probably two of these to do six wheels on a bus. If you're doing something smaller like a one-ton uh, G-Van school bus, they've got way smaller wheels. Um, you could probably paint those with one, all those with one can. So let me touch this up and it will spin it around.
Actually, this side doesn't look that bad. I think we'll just wait, and uh, if it needs it later, we'll do it later. <gasps> Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just do the other one. You guys to see how it works. Um, that's pretty much it as far as breaking them down and uh, putting them back together. So um, always use caution filling them up. I like to put about five pounds of pressure in them and check the ring real well. Um, make sure it's still seated under the lip. I don't beat on it or anything. I just look at it visually. And then I'll do about 10 pounds, make sure it's still under the lip. If it's not had an issue by 10 pounds, probably not going to have any issues. I'll be honest, I've never really, as long as the ring's locked from the start, never really had any issues on them. Um, you've seen the amount of forces required to even pry them on and off, so the chance of them popping off on the ring is pretty, pretty non-existent. But use caution as always. Use your best judgment. And uh, anyway, I'm going to get moving and get this other one mounted up so I can go in and get some brake parts and hopefully we can get, get some brakes on this thing and uh, get, get it where it can be moved around. So uh, like it, subscribe it if that's uh, if you like, and uh, give me a thumbs up. It would be fantastic, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next video. So God bless everybody. Have a great day.